Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Hey guys, before we get going on today's episode, I wanted to let you know about a new program that I've started. It's called Noom. Now I have tried all sorts of different programs, um, recently keto. The problem was that I found it was very limited in terms of what sort of food that you can eat. Um, I found that I was eating a lot of solids, a lot of really dense foods. And going through the program with Noom, you realize that dense foods really aren't all that great for you. What you want are foods with lots of water content. Thanks Noom for that, uh, <laughs> for that tidbit of information. My weight has been historically kind of up and down. I have moments where I have more time and I'm able to eat better. And then there's moments where I'm just too busy and I don't have the time to do it. And I find myself snacking on like a piece of cheese or a piece of meat or something like that. And although those are high in protein, they're not really high in fluid, not high in water content. So I've kind of been doing this wrong as it turns out. And I'm going to be giving Noom a shot to see if it can help redirect my food resources in the right area. <laughs> um, it's always been kind of a challenge and I'm sure everybody out there that the last couple of years it's been hard to get out there and sometimes to access the foods that you want um, and find the time for it. And I'm hoping that my life will settle down to a point where I can get into a better and more regular schedule. What Noom does is it helps you by uh, giving you guidance and using science and using uh, tracking tools to give you an idea of what you should be eating, when you should be eating it. And you don't have to cut out the foods that you love. You just have to kind of limit the things that aren't as healthy for you. I find it to be a really useful resource. Um, my biggest problem was that it would be, you know, maybe late at night and I'd feel a little bit snacky. And instead of having a glass of water or maybe like a handful of grapes, which is better for you, I might reach in the pantry and grab that salty snack and kind of <laughs> regret it later on. You know, you don't feel so great, you feel heavy. Uh, I really want to try and retrain myself. This isn't a short-term weight loss program. This is long-term making changes to help uh, better your choices and, uh, and make things better. One thing I love about Noom is that it's based on science. It's based on hitting your non-weight goals. Like a lot of times people focus on how much do I weigh? This is more based around building the proper habits. And for me, that's been paramount. It is being more conscious, more aware of the things that I'm eating. Um, you know, it's kind of like putting uh, cheaper fuel in your car versus premium fuel. You're gonna run better and feel better if you've got premium fuel. And that's what I've got to give myself with fruits and vegetables and occasionally have a snack or something, but maybe not as often as I was. Um, you can check out Noom as well by going to noom.com slash curiosity inc. I'll put the link bloop, right down there. Um, check it out for yourself. See how it works for you. It's a different sort of experience. It's not, um, it's not like anything else really out there. Um, it's got really great reviews and I find that it's just nice to have that resource to go to as a reminder, as a daily reminder of what I should be eating. And as you log your meals in there, you kind of see like, <laughs> put writing it down or putting it in, in the app kind of reminds you, right, I actually chose to eat this. And you can kind of see yourself slowly making better and better choices. But guys, check it out. Again, thank you to Noom for sponsoring this video and we'll see you guys soon. Now back to the video. Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode. I am out and I'm running around. I'm doing errands today in the old truck, which is nice to have back. Um, this morning I went over and I chatted with a very nice gentleman uh, who has a very nice car, which I would love to have. He's got a 1959 Porsche 356 A convertible in really good shape. Um, a little bit possibly maybe out of my budget right now. <laughs> but while I was there looking uh, at uh, pictures of his car and chatting and stuff, I was able to pick up a few collectibles, which I've got in the truck. And I'm going to offload those. This is just part of my um, visit today. I've got to take this stuff to the store, get it offloaded. Um, and then later this afternoon, I'm going over to uh, look at a automotive shop, which is shutting down. 
and they have all kinds of cool stuff that they've never really wanted to sell. Like every time I went in there and I'd ask, like, is this for sale, is that for sale? They'd say, no, no, no. But maybe because they're closing, they might change their mind. I guess I will find out. Um, so follow along today um, on our episode. And uh, I guess before I haul this stuff in here, I should show you what I bought too. <laughs> it should be a fun day today. First order of business. We have, this is a, a porcelain enamel. Some of you might say, oh, it's not porcelain. Well, it is actually, it's a, it's a applied glass on top of steel. So they call it a porcelain sign. It's not like a porcelain um, mug because there is steel behind it, but uh, it is uh, baked and enamel sort of porcelain uh, graphics on it. These signs are quite collectible. This one being probably from the 1930s or so for Exide batteries. It could be a little earlier. I'll have to look it up. Sometimes they're dated at the bottom. Um, this would have been on the exterior of a building advertising that they sold these batteries. Uh, what they, The guy who had Exide would have come by and said, hey, if you carry our battery line, we'll give you a sign and you stick it up on your building. So on our store, we've actually replicated some signs um, on the outside of it, like the Coca-Cola sign and the uh, 50 cent pop sign and stuff like that, because uh, they, the graphics like that give a building an, an excellent, very interesting sort of look. And in fact, when we sanded this sign down, and when we sanded the, uh, the, the wall down to put the uh, sign up, there was an original 1920 cigarette ad behind that, but uh, because, well, I don't encourage smoking and there's an elementary school right down there, <laughs> just beyond that apartment, I don't want to be advertising cigarettes for the kids coming around. But, uh, so we put Coca-Cola there. <laughs> Not sure that hopping up the kids on sugar is much better, but it's still, it's cool, it's fun. It gives the building a retro look. And that's why people buy signs like this. They buy these old signs because they want to decorate their shop. They want to have that feeling of nostalgia. And uh, old signs like this can be, you know, hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars. Uh, so it's always nice to find them. And uh, they definitely look great inside a garage. In fact, in the last couple of days, I had a few old signs come in. Uh, the Exide sign just now, and the old Goodyear tire sign, which came in yesterday. Railway crossing, there's a shell sign. Those should all go very well. But there's a couple other things that I picked up today that were kind of neat. I'll show you right here. License plates. Now, um, some early license plates were actually the same porcelain enamel finish like this. Usually, if it's a early 1900s, 19-teens, sort of era, it would be this enamel. But this is a 1917 Alberta license plate and it's very thin painted metal with the green back. Now there would have been two of these in the pair, but it's they're really, really hard to find in any kind of condition. And so uh, I'm quite happy to have that one. Why somebody would buy this, it could be decoration. Uh, but if you have a 1917, like a Model T or something, and you wanna have that look, you might want to have a license plate like this uh, on as a decoration on your vehicle to give you that uh, nostalgic look. So that was a good find. But one that, item that I thought was really neat, uh, look at this plate, Custom Swanks Edmonton. This is a car club plaque. So they would place this on the front uh, in place of the front license plate or in conjunction with it. Um, these car club plaques are pretty darn neat. Um, this would have been a 1950s car club. You know, the guys would have gotten together with their hot rods and stuff. And so this is a like 1950s, maybe early 60s hot rod plaque. It's made out of cast aluminum, uh, or if you want to say aluminum and be all fancy like. And it's hand painted and just a really cool part of our uh, Edmonton hot rodding history. Well, finding stuff like this out in the uh, out in the wild is always um, sort of a fun day for me. And this day is just getting warmed up. So let's uh, get this stuff set out. We'll get it uh, on display and priced and uh, I'll head out the door. Perfect. It's all out on display. Hopefully somebody will come by and buy it. But for me, I want to keep this day going. Incidentally, I'm quite happy with the work that the shop did get my truck back together. If you guys recall, it was all dented in, scraped up down the side, trim peeled off. And now it's uh, almost good as new. Yesterday we did an oil change, fresh spark plugs, new fan belts, and I tell you, she's running and driving great. Perfect vehicle for hauling old signs around. Almost at 
my next stop. Um, I'm stopping in the uh, town of Stony Plain, Alberta. And there's an antique store out here, I guess an antique mall. Uh, I think it's called One Man's Junk. Figure I'm gonna go there, see what they got, because uh, I'm here anyway. The last stop I made, I did not film there, but I got a couple cool things. Guy had all sorts of neat old cars and signs. Some of it was a little out of my price range, but uh, some of it was okay. And uh, I got a couple really neat items. The, the tricky part is trying to figure out what goes to the store and Maybe there's some things that I'm starting to find I might want to keep for myself, but um, let's go check out an antique shop and see what they have in town, and I'll show you what, we, what else we picked up so far. Well, I was wrong. The name of this little antique shop is called One Man's Treasure Antique Emporium, so we're going to go inside and have a look about. Brass ornamental bell. It's hard sometimes to figure out what's new and what's actually old. Don't know if there's stuff for sale in there too, or if that's off limits. Locally made honey products and face masks and stuff. It is nice to have a bit of variety in a store. So we do a little bit of that ourselves. Bottles that my friend Bob would be interested in. Somebody's made themselves a metal frog. He's got a bit of character, doesn't he? Kind of a fun little thing. I need an idea. It looks like they repurposed these old hardware store drawers that used to hold spring hinges. And now they've got um, their accessories and latches and poles and stuff in them. It's a good way to sort it. Looks kind of neat. On occasion, I do buy old radios. And when I come across one, this is called a Crosley dashboard because it looks kind of like the dashboard of a car, other than the fact it's missing one of the knobs there. It looks to be in pretty good shape. Um, these are really popular looking radios. In fact, they reproduced them back in the 1990s. You, you can tell the reproductions have a cassette, I think, on the side. Um, $220 is about what it's worth. You never know when you find something like that and it's a little less than you'd expect. It's a really cool looking radio though. I believe the booth I'm in right now, actually, um, all this stuff belongs to my friend Dwayne, who we trade and swap and buy and sell off each other all the time. And he's always got lots of neat stuff. What I like about his booths is that he carries a little bit of everything, you know, random ornaments or trophy toppers, hood ornaments, ashtrays, toys, like you name it. There's pretty much just a little bit of everything that you can imagine. He himself though has a passion more for oil cans and coffee tins and a lot of you watching at home say well who on earth in their right mind would buy an old tea uh, an old coffee tin or um, an old oil can when it's you know with somebody's garbage years ago but the surprising thing is lots of people do they decorate they set up their shops or garages or uh, when it comes to tea and coffee tins or kitchens to look like it's an old general store so stuff like that can uh, sell really well but I'm looking for really interesting stuff I actually quite like this diamond die sign it's a metal printed sign. Look at the graphics on that. It looks almost like, you know, <laughs> I was gonna say, she looks like a, a wizard of some kind. It's like the people sort of in the, the, the darkness and the shades. You've got the hues with the, the kids and just really interesting, fanciful looking sign. Really quite like that. But we'll keep, keep on browsing and see what we can come up with. These uh, shipping prints are kind of interesting because it would have been inside like a travel agency or something like that. The earlier ones are worth a bit more. This one's probably from the 50s, featuring the, a ship called the Bremen. But um, when you find them and they have, you know, going back to Titanic era, really, they would put these in um, offices and you'd kind of see what the ship looks like that you'd be taking your big destination on. For some people, that was a trip to the New World, maybe the, the last time they'd cross the ocean. Um, so they're pretty interesting item. You don't see too many of the really old ones. When we did the uh, Potter's House series, if you haven't watched that, you can go back and watch it. When I was up in the attic, I found some really old Canadian Pacific travel posters in the attic. And that's one of the reasons why I ended up buying that whole house. But old photographs, guys in their anti-gas gear, gas masks and so forth. Lots of old bottles. 
I'm scanning these shelves here and I know that a lot of times people say, I wish you would just slow down so we can get a better view of the stuff that you're looking at. And so I'm slowing it down a little bit. Oh, that's kind of fun. Rose Motors, North Battleford, Saskatchewan. North Battleford's the town that I got the uh, shelves with my son Jason for our, our new store. Okay, let's keep on trucking. Looks like we built this whole motorcycle out of wire, twisted wire. 50 bucks. You think for the amount of time it probably took somebody to do that by the hour. <laughs> Not that I need wire art like that myself, but I appreciate the effort that goes into something like that. I was looking at this. Sometimes there's funny little things you haven't seen before. Look at this industrial tape dispenser. Holy cow. That means business right there. That's not your average tape dispenser. Don't know if you could find tape for it still, but must have been in a, in a maybe a department store or maybe a butcher shop or something where you'd have to constantly have paper tape and tape up packages. There's a miner's lantern. I was kind of hoping to find maybe something for our art niches too, for our new house. But so far, nothing is really jumping out at me. Some kind of statue or interesting thing to go in there. Horn rim glasses. I have seen people switch out the lenses for uh, sunglasses. They actually look pretty neat. Okay. Well, there was a lot of neat stuff in there, but nothing that really jumped out at me today. I've already spent probably enough money today at other places. <laughs> One of my favorite finds. Okay, I got to show you what I picked up while I was out here. This is why I'm here. Now, the gentleman I bought this from used to have a, uh, a shop where he sold Model T Ford parts, and I ended up with this really cool hand-painted sign. Now, it's probably you know, not as old as the Model T's are. It's it's sort of a replica thing, but it's really cool because the Model T car is built up out of copper and it's three-dimensional. Comes off the, the picture. It's got this great sort of graphics on it. It's all hand-painted and made. I, it's just a lovely thing. You know, picked it up because, well, it's neat. And uh, how often do you see something like that? While I was there, I ended up also getting this nifty little Firestone tire clock with a little display. And this is an insert for a tire. Uh, would have been in a shop that uh, when you were selling tires, you could put your Goodwear, Goodyear tire uh, insert in there, kind of like a hubcap, and it would just dress it up for the showroom. But that wasn't my favorite thing. These aren't my favorite things I picked up today. They're among, I mean, this is really cool. I'm quite happy about that, but let me show you my favorite thing. Okay, here, <laughs> here's one of my favorite things. This you might recognize as being the Michelin Man. What you might not know is that uh, the Michelin Man, whose name is actually Mr. Bibendum, or Mr. Bib for short, is a stack of white rubber tires. Uh, at least that's what he was supposed to be. Um, that's what he represents. And what's cool about this is that they actually have him sitting on a stack of Michelin tires. So he's, I don't know if he's cannibalized another. <laughs> anyway, he's so cool. This is the piece that I'm having a struggle um, thinking about selling because a statue like this is so darn neat and I think it would look fantastic in either my shop or, or in the office. I might just put this one on display for now and not put a price tag on it because I, I do like this an awful lot. It's a cool piece. It's nice early advertising. You don't see a lot of uh, Michelin Man stuff like this around. They actually made a Michelin Man uh, like this that was also um, an air pump which is pretty rare and collectible too. But um, I think there was a few neat finds today. And this is, I think, um, definitely one of the cooler ones. Back in the shop now, just getting stuff set up. That found a home for the Model T sign. And everything is more or less finding its place. And it's a good thing I've been doing lots of sales lately and auctions to clear up space because I'm trying to get cool, interesting, and neat stuff in. And you need to have the space and the resources to do it. So uh, I'm happy. I think today uh, worked out pretty good. So thanks for watching today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I've got to go to the shop and offload this stuff, get it uh, taken over and put price tags on almost everything, except uh, the Michelin Man, which I'm still, uh, still think that's pretty neat. That might end up coming home with me. So maybe you'll watch a video down the road and I'm putting the Michelin Man on display in my garage. 
Either way, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you all very soon. And as always, bye for now.